Greetings, my name is Meticulix, here with something I thought might be fun to try, and that is just record me building a Lego model. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, I thought perhaps maybe you might find this interesting, maybe I can show off some of my techniques, and if you learn something useful, uh, that'd be pretty cool. So, as you can see here, um, I'm going to be designing a brick head. And um, for those of you who haven't, uh, and if you would like to try one, if you go onto LEGO's website and you scroll to the bottom left of the page, there'll be a icon or a button that says Building Instructions. And then, if in the search, if you search for Go Brick Me, there will be an instructions for the LEGO set for Go Brick Me, and in the set of instructions, there's a template for this blank white brick heads. So this is very good. Um, this will give you all the proportions and how to, um, you know, construct it. And then you can go from there to design and add um, features as you wish for whatever you're building. Um, if you've never designed a brick head before, another thing I suggest is in the building instruction section on LEGO's website, just search for brick heads and just look through the instructions of the uh, brick heads they have available. And um, that way, that will give you ideas on what you can do, what parts you can add, and um, even some really bizarre techniques just to and like keep it within the brickhead standard, but ways to kind of branch out as well. Because um, lately they've been doing a whole lot of crazy stuff from giving characters no legs to, you know, just all sorts of weird things. So that's a, a good way to um, to break into the brickheads if you want to design one. Um, one more thing I should state is if you're going to use Digital Designer, the brickhead's eye decal does not exist. So, um... What I did is, and I'll have it in the description, there's a link to where you can create custom decals for a digital designer. And so I just followed that tutorial and then I just added the BrickHead's eyes. I find that much easier to, um, to work on them because if it's just a black round tile, it tends to look kind of weird. So this helps me uh, keep all of that in track. So a little background on this model is I was thinking oh, which one I should build and I recalled that I wanted a while back to design Wurt from Over the Garden Wall. So, um, you know, it just kind of got away from me a little bit and then Lego came out with um, one of their most recent brickheads, Harry Potter and the Owl, which I can't remember the name. And I thought oh, that would just be perfect to build Wurt and Beatrice. Because before, I thought, oh, I could build Wurt and Greg, but I was like, ah, I don't know if I really want to build Greg, because the last time I designed a side character to a primary model I wanted to build, that got me in trouble and two weeks of building. Yeah, that was uh, kind of difficult. So I thought, okay, that'd be cool. So, and now, you know, I finished my last brickhead, and um, I figured this would be pretty, a perfect time, you know, because with this video and stuff, and um, so... I had started work on Beatrice a little while ago, so I'm going to actually bring up the little model that I've started. And um, again, what I did is I just looked up the uh, the Harry Potter brickhead instructions, and I just pretty much copied the owl and changed it to how I um, I was going to need it. So before I continue, two invaluable assets that I utilize when designing brickheads are Google. Uh, obviously, because uh, you're going to need reference pictures for whatever you're going to design. That is, at least if it's from like a, a show or a game or something. And then BrickLink. Uh, if you don't know what BrickLink is, this is probably the best place for LEGO, period. They have every single set that LEGO has released in existence. And they also have cataloged every single part LEGO has released in existence. Not only that, but this is a marketplace, so you can buy the parts. So if you do design a brickhead, then you can come on a brick link, find all the parts from different stores and sellers, and you can purchase them from here. But what I really like, um, because I, I prefer to design my models as being able to be built in real life, so I only use pieces that actually exist. So this is a great place to find out, for instance, uh, if I just click plate, and uh, let's say I need a 1x2 plate. Okay, let's see. I need it in purple. Okay, come here. Alright, it does indeed come in dark purple. So then I would be cleared to go and use that part in my model. So this piece is a 1x3 tile. 
So if I just go back to the parts, click tile, I find the one by three, and I need it in light gray. So okay, there we go. We got it in light gray. So that's um, clear. Um, more of the common colors are um, available in pretty much everything, so you don't need to check that all the time. Again, like white and gray, but something like this flesh color, um, or the medium blue, or the dark blue, that's where you're going to want to check the, uh, the colors or the parts to make sure that they're actually available. Again, if you don't mind not being able to purchase the model, then you don't have to worry about that. You can just go and build and color willy-nilly. Um, Another quick thing about that, if you're using Digital Designer, um, there are the, the free tabs up here. And again, um, if you're versed in Digital Designer, you already know this. The first tab here is just standard Digital Designer, where every piece comes in the color. So I want a red brick. Okay, I find a red brick. If I want like a blue brick, okay, I gotta find a blue brick. I prefer using the extended mode because everything is just monocolor over here in red but that allows you to quickly find the parts and then you just go to the paint tool and then you just paint it to however you need so if i need this in purple i can just paint it in purple that way i don't have to go scrolling through a ton of the same part and looking for what i need so this is a little prototype i made of beatrice here um it's a little different than from i think the hedwig i think that's the name of the owl um but it's primarily the same. I changed the beak uh, and the wings a little bit. And again, this is where I was talking about the color. So this fancy little piece here is a more recent release from Lego. However, if you go onto Bricklink, you will notice that they do not come in medium blue. They come in blue, but not in medium blue. So that is um, something I haven't reconciled yet because obviously I want it to be her uh, wings are a bit more medium blue than just blue blue I feel like it'd be a little too shocking as if I just show here I mean it could work but um, I'd rather go try to go with medium blue uh, so that's something I'm just gonna leave at the moment again sometimes I'll use pieces that don't exist if I feel like Lego perhaps is going to release them in that color in the future um, this one I'm not so sure about, so I'm just going to leave it like that because, again, this is still a prototype. Again, these little winglets here, I'm using dark blue, but it could be more of like perhaps an azure color. Like maybe if I go with, eh, that's a bit too turquoise. So, got sand blue. It's a little too pale. So I'm just going to keep that dark blue for the moment because blue is, again, well, it's a little shocking. I don't know, that almost doesn't look so bad. Maybe I'll just go with blue for now. But again, here we are. Let me check to make sure that part actually comes in blue. So that would be a wedge plate. And let's see. And okay, it does indeed come in blue. Um, another thing is if it only shows, okay, it comes in one set. This can cause some problems because the fewer sets it comes in, the more expensive the part. And in this case, this is a fairly big set so sometimes what I like to do is I'll go and check how many or and what's for sale okay so you know not so bad um, some foreign sellers but they each got a lot and they're pretty cheap so and since this set just came out let us let's just check um, okay it came out this year so it's a new set so that means that more of these parts will probably be available on Bricklink as time progresses so that's a part that okay you know that should be vi a viable option should I ever want to pick this model up. Okay, so let's just go back to the picture. And um, so, you know, she's just got, it's, she's pretty simple, just got a gray head, a bit of flesh up there before it goes into white. So, um, I know it doesn't look the greatest, I'd say. That that big gray head looks kind of funny, but I don't. Re there's really no way to fix it because she's just got a big gray head. But, um, so, you know, we got the, the little feet down there. And um, the tail is something that I want to change because it's more, you know, fluffed out. So th this is how they built on Hedwidge, and it's, um, you know, it looks more owly, more feathery, feathery, feathery. You know, it looks like feathers. Okay. So, so that's something I'd want to branch out a little bit. So I'm just gonna go scroll through here, um, see what 
parts we got in the, the fancy plates. So right off the bat, I'm thinking I could use maybe some of these wedge pieces, kind of like put them like that, or I could use this other type. And um, oops, I don't want to keep copying it. There we go. So the color would be again medium blue. So sometimes I'll just prototype, and uh, regardless of what the color is, if I'm just trying to get the form, and that way it'll give me an um, an idea of what to shoot for, and then I can check the. But you still gotta make sure then to check the colors because that can get. I've had issues where like I built them, I'm like, oh cool, and then I look, and I'm like, oh, oh wait, that part doesn't exist. So then I've had to go redesign it, and uh, that can be annoying. So, now, the only thing I see here is since this is four studs wide, and this is three studs wide, that won't really fit too well. Also, the, the winglets are going to get in the way. So, um, I haven't, this is the first mini brickheads I've designed, so I don't have much, like, experience. I'm much better with the full brickheads. So what I could do is we could go at this a couple different ways. Probably what would be the best idea at this point is just using one of these lamp holders and just putting some plates on it. And if we start building sideways, this will give us a lot more um, range. Like we can just put it in the center there. And if I just attach one of these small slopes, that way it kind of gives that tail effect a little bit. Um, you know, we can even probably go one further and use these slopes. And if we fill this up, we can go and give it a little bit more of that ruffle pattern. You see, it kind of looks like the tail a little bit. I suppose it's a little big. Um, let's see if I can even fit that. So I'd probably... So, yeah, I could probably keep this form going if I just remove this for a second. Yeah, you know, something like that. Um, it's a little big, but it kind of gets the point of... Well, I don't know, because with her wings down, I should probably have the tail a little bit more narrow. So, maybe I'll just... I could just tile it. And, um... That way it won't be so overly obnoxiously big. Just like that. Even so, it's a little big, so perhaps I could just go with the my one slopes like I originally planned. That way um, there's not too much tail going on here. Because if you've, if you've seen the Legos Rocket Raccoon, uh, he has a big tail, and he's one of these small guys, but I don't want to go that big. So, you know, eh, you know something like that it looks a little... Awkward. I don't know. Um, this, the the roundness kind of breaks up the outline a little bit, and it's a little high because when you the slope's coming down. This is gonna be a bit of a challenge, but uh, it'll be good uh, experience if it's not too boring for you guys to watch. That's uh, <laughs> that's not what I intend here, but we'll see what happens. So, all right, give me a couple seconds, and uh, I'll get back with you and see what I can come up with. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is on BrickLink, a very useful section that I have come to enjoy is the color guide. What this is, is it has all the colors that of parts that's on the website, and then if you go and click on it, you can find the what parts come in that color. So this is the, the number that you're going to be interested in, because this is how many parts come in that color. So I'm going to look for medium blue, and then I'm just going to click here. So there's 698 parts and it'll get you a list of all the different parts. So when I'm just looking through colors, I just like to view all, and this gets you just everything that comes in medium blue. So something that to be warned though, is just because it's sold, does that mean it comes in that color. So someone might be selling a part in medium blue, but it might not have been released in that color. For instance, maybe Miss Cull, like maybe they uh, uploaded it in the wrong color, or maybe it's a rare color that isn't sold but it does exist like for instance a famous one is Darth Vader's helmet you can buy it in red it's never been released in red but you can buy it in red uh, so you just want to be cautious 
when you're looking through these parts, just make sure that it's actually legitimately in that color. So I'm going to scroll through these and I'm going to see if I can find something useful. You know, I always get sidetracked looking at other parts in the colors, because I'll see them and it's like, where'd that come in? And then it's like, oh, okay. And then I go back to whatever I was doing. Okay, so I've come up with this part, which this is a brand new part from LEGO. It's a small little bracket, and it's so brand new that it's not available in Digital Designer. So that can cause some issues. But this is where, if you know the, um, kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The science of LEGO, you can, and this is part of why I like Digital Designer, is a lot of times I'll just have pieces floating because I know they'll fit there, but because of limitations of Digital Designer, I can't actually put them there. So this will be a great example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two slopes. I know that that bracket is, what is just half of this one. So if I just put this here, and I continue on with the build, so I would want to build out back, I can remove this. Now I can just put this back on top, and this is where it would be should I have been using the bracket, even though it's just floating in midair. And I can continue on building and uh, act like it's actually mounted to the model. Now granted, this will come, this will be, um, have to be remembered, if I use the connected selection and I go to move the model, it's not going to move those parts. So. When I do techniques like this, I generally just click and drag the entire model. That way I get everything that is and isn't attached. So for instance, okay, now we got this here. And I can just attach that and I can continue building like it was actually mounted. Now, I don't know, this doesn't have any effects that I had anticipated, the uh, bit of a white tail still. So perhaps um, all I can do is I'll go and take one of these plates with a hole in it, and I know they don't come in medium blue, so I'm just going to use white because I think that would work. Take one of these one by two plates, and I'm going to attach it in the center. And let's see how this works for a tail. Um, I don't know. Um, it's such a such a tricky design working with this small style and because I'm not used to building onto the models like well, like I guess hats and hair qualifies but this is actually like part of the model so and getting the whole flow of it I'm thinking I'm thinking perhaps if I move these guys up and we can get some then that might work here it's just we kill this that all right so if I move this one more in and again this is where things get a little tricky because now I need this to hang in midair and I can't just move it so all I'll do is I'll just if I can grab it wrong piece just grab that and get this plate out of here in fact I could just leave this here for the moment and move this one more in and let's see how that looks uh, no I'm gonna look better the other way. Control Z is your friend, by the way. The undo button. I like the dimension that's going on here. Um, it gives a little bit of that, I don't know, just kind of curvature that, because since she's a bird, you need that the look to it. But I didn't really find it. It's a shame I can't find any shots of her back, because that would be a bit useful. But not that it's really any big deal. Um, hmm, this tail is going to be kind of tricky. Alright, we gotta brainstorm a little bit, and I'll come back to you in a second. Okay, so I found this piece that comes in medium blue, and I think this might just do the trick. Now here's a little thing with Digital Designer BrickLink. For instance, this is counted as a brick modified on BrickLink. In Digital Designer, 
it is under this category. So sometimes it can be difficult finding random pieces like that. So I've had times where I've just been searching and searching and searching and I just cannot find the piece because they don't call them the same things. They, the color names aren't even the same at times. Like you got dark green, which I'm Lego, I mean I'm Bricklink, this is dark green, but here they call dark green earth green. So that can get a little annoying every now and then, but uh, I've been a digital designer for so many times that I pretty much know where everything is. Uh, it's almost scary to think about it. But So we got this piece. So the only trouble with this is this is two suds wide and this is three suds wide. So this is where uh, some something's going to have to happen in order to turn three studs into two studs. Um, so I'll get back with you in just a second and uh, we'll see if I come up with anything good. Okay, so we might be getting there slowly. Um, this was another perfect example of floating pieces. So what I had to do is I had mounted the tail piece onto this uh, one by three plate with uh, two jumper studs and I couldn't attach it where I needed to. So I had to put it on, I had to mount it onto the uh, model here and then attach plates on top of it, delete the plate here and then move it Oh, come on, where did I go? Okay, well, apparently I had uh, undone that. But what I had to do is I had to raise it up one by using this this red plate here as a floater and just moving this whole section up one. But then I modified it a little bit and I got to where we are now. Um, it's looking a little big under here. It would probably be better if it just looked like that. And maybe if I could actually move the tail one more stud up, uh, that might give the, the look that we are looking for, at least. That's the intended idea. So something like this. If I could get this to work, um, boy, if I could even move that down, I don't know. Because sometimes you can find you can actually work with half plates here. Like I'm thinking if I can move that down half a plate. Uh, in this situation, I don't think that will be plausible just because of how what, we don't have a lot of building space. But when you're building on the heads, it's actually quite plausible to build with half plates. and. Um, Probably when I get into the work figure, I'll, I'll be talking more about that. But right now, um, I'm going to try this a little more so we'll see what happens. Well, isn't this guy just too cute? I'm starting to run out of options here. Hmm, getting there, getting there. Um, this is where it's useful to know knowledge of pieces. So for instance, we have these two types of jumper studs. This, the first type has a, a round stud in it, but the second type has these little notches. So that allows you to straddle this jumper stud onto normal plates, whereas this one you cannot. So sometimes you can kind of cheat and just use this advanced, more recent jumper stud, and you can pop it on there and, um, you know, straddle studs like that. So, um, hmm. maybe I can use that to my advantage. Maybe, maybe. No, I just got a funny idea. Hang on. Okay. Uh, straight up. No, that's uh, that's not looking right. Um, it's, this is kind of working. I think I could go with this, but. I feel like if I could, again, back to the half plates. I'm in such a mood, a mode for that anymore. I'm like, oh, I wonder if I can move my half plate. If I can move this half a plate up. And uh, what I mean by half a plate is, uh, you'll notice that these brackets, if I can find one of these two ones, how they, if you put it on the outside of a brick, 
So instead of this being a, um, I just have this little diagram here. So this is a brick with a face stud on it. So if you put a stud on it, that's, you know, a plate out. These brackets are half a plate. So you can use that to your advantage, for instance, if you make and use a uh, one of these fancier bricks with studs on the front. I forget what they call it. Just, oh, angular bricks. Uh, we call them light bricks around here. But anyway, so if you use a light brick and you put a plate here, this is the same distance as this. So this is now half a plate out. So that can come in uh, quite handy in certain situations, with, especially with brick heads in particular. But um, I don't think I can do that in this situation because, you know, I can't just move this half a plate up because there's a lot of extra criteria involved. Um, it's much simpler just dealing in the plate. Well, obviously, because, you know, plates are more standard measurement than the half plates. So I don't know if I can go for that. Um, perhaps what I could do is if I could lower this slope by a half plate, that would get the effect that I want. Um, again, what I had done is I turned this into a small slope, put these big ones on the sides because I wanted a little definition going on. I didn't just want the same um, shape going all the way back. Um, but I don't know, I still feel like if this tail was just a little bit higher, but again, if it's a full plate up, it just looks kind of, just looks a little wonky. So, so far, this is the best I've gotten so far. And uh, what I should probably do here is I'm just going to save this just because, you know, in case something happens. <laughs> Nothing could happen. This is a computer. I mean, computers never crash. What are you talking about? So, all right. Give this another shot. Let's see what's going to happen. So, again, here's another situation. I want to move this plate piece over here. Or, actually, I want to make more. So, I can copy this plate or slope in this plate. And that way, I can... That one plate will attach. And thus move the slope to where I want it. So that's an easy way to hang pieces in midair without ha having to go through a whole lot of hassle. If you can mount a disposable piece on the model, then the piece you really want that's going to be floating can stay there. Maybe I should just go back to the lamp holder. Um, Tail doesn't look so bad that way, uh, but I, I just don't like the, the circle there, unless there's some way I can cheat and I can change it up a little bit. Um, let's see what I can do. Alright, now, I had an idea where I could use one of these bricks with two studs on each side. However, uh, I remember going through the brick list that they uh, they do not exist in medium blue. So even though I want to try that, um, I'm just going to steer away from it because even if I get it to work, I know it's not going to be viable uh, in the end product. I mean, I don't know. That, that doesn't look so bad. Um, again not really knowing where I'm doing in this field. Um, I suppose I could live with that tail. Uh, I found in the past that sometimes models look different in real life versus digital designer, even though they're built exactly the same way. So even if it looks a little funky in digital designer, it could actually work in real life. So, um, you know, I might just, yeah, we might just try that. Um, I'm pretty sure, but I just want to double check. Um, I'm almost, okay, yeah, here we are. These lamp holders do come in medium blue. Um, again, just want to check uh, two sets here. All right, now I know this is a really uh, old and a really weird set. So this one comes with six in here. So that means it shouldn't be too difficult to get my hands on them. Okay, yeah, so, you know, this looks like it'll work. Okay, just making sure of that. So um, I might just go with that. Yeah, I, I think I could go with that, okay. Not so bad. Um, a little bit of cleanup time here because uh, you'll find that once you get the outside aesthetic working, sometimes you have just gutted the interior. So, um, for instance, if I just go and check, okay, uh, this is a good test. Select, like, take the connected selection tool and hide. This will show what's missing. Okay, so uh, everything except for the wings are attached. So I have to figure out how to reattach the wings. And I think all I have to do is change these these slopes with these and I can put these bricks back in or can I not oh wait I raised it up. okay see now this is gonna be where some trouble comes in because I raised those these slopes up one now I can't fit the brick in there to actually attach the wings um, and I don't think I'm gonna like 
how it looks if I lower it. Yeah, see, I don't really like how that is. Okay, so, um, first idea is here is I can just go and turn them all into these small slopes. Uh, okay, but hey, I'm not really digging that look so much. Up. So this is where things start to get a little dicey. Um, okay, well, I suppose it's not too, like, it could be worse. Wait a second, where did I get that mounted? Okay, I was thinking that's not going to work, but it does. I suppose this would be a prime time for me to actually fix these wingtips here, unless, unless, um, it is, has been released since I last checked, uh, in medium blue. I don't think so, but, you know, you can always hope. Oh, wait, I just checked earlier. That shows you how much of memory I got. Okay, well, <laughs> nice try there, nice try. Again, I could always turn it to blue, but I think it's... I mean, I guess it's not as shocking as I would claim it to be. Like, if I did turn that to blue, turn this to dark blue, you know, just kind of shuffle the color palette a little bit. Um, I mean, I don't know. Medium blue would be... I mean, obviously, that is much better as medium blue. Even if I just... <sighs> picky, picky, picky. I am so picky. Oh, well. Let me see if I can attach these wings, uh, um, hopefully, because, you know, they're kind of an important part of the model here. Okay, so I, I could get away with this, although uh, <laughs> it might be a little troublesome with the, the legs. Um, let's see, because if this wing's here... Uh, it's only a, a fraction of it lower, so it's not like it's going to be some big old, big old problem here. Besides clicking the right thing. Okay, come on. Wrong one. Okay, so, um, I mean, yeah, that could, I could kind of maybe do it. Uh, let's see if I can actually attach everything else to this model. I like to be exact with my measurements. It has to be 45 degrees! The space plane is getting in the way. You know, do 1x3 plates even come in medium blue? That would be a very good uh, question to answer right about now. If I can even find medium blue. And the winner is... Yes, okay. Alright, I need to see around the back of her head, because I don't know what... I got a little bit of that flesh color here, I don't know how low that's supposed to... to, um... go down. Cause you, you can see it around, like, the underside, so I guess it would be under this, like, the wing. Um, that's going the whole way back behind her body, but again, this is, it's, it's a bird, I don't know how to, the, the anatomy of a bird works, can I get a, a shot of her back or something, that would be quite useful at this point in time. You finally get, when it says show more results on Google, you've been scrolling for too long. Okay, I found the back shot of her head, and there's no, um, no flesh color. However, I've noticed that it's going all the way under her arm. I just called it an arm. Okay, I've been here a little too long. It's almost creeping on an hour, so I better wrap this up. Okay, all right. So, this is what I got so far. It'd probably help if I cleaned up a little bit. I tend to get very, very messy. I don't care, it's just a digital scape, but I usually like leaving the pieces out. Um, just in case, you know, I change stuff back. So, um, here we go. So far, this is what we got. Um, not bad, not bad. I still think she looks a little, just a little funky. Um, again, just, I don't know, stuff that, that entirely gray head is just... I don't know, and this, there's not a whole lot of detail, but but there is not a whole lot of detail. I can't really, I don't have much to, more to work with, which is kind of difficult. So, um, 
just going with what we can do here. So, I still have to figure out what to do with these wing bits. Uh, I'll probably just search for the colors once more uh, for medium blue, see what I can get here. The tail, you know, this back section actually came out pretty decently. Um, I think it'll, it'll work out fine. Um, no changes to the head. Uh, I think this looks pretty good as the beak there. Just, you know, something a little. Uh, dark gray probably will look a little more accurate, but this actually, I've currently got it in a, a metallic color because uh, that's just what they come in. They don't come in a plain gray. So, you know, that might, that little shine might make it look a little darker. So, um, uh, I didn't show the head because, um, why I'd already had together. Something to note about when you're building stuff like this is that, again, here's another example. These two pieces, instead of it being a 1x3 brick, I just, I got 1x2 and 1x1 because 1x3 bricks don't exist. So, um... Well, you know, I'll probably go more into the, the structure of how studs are laid out once I get into the uh, the the work model because it'll have more of application there. Um, well, I will mention one thing. So you can see that the bricks here, you can t uh, view a little bit of the color underneath. So for instance, if I had just made this red, that oh, would bleed through, <laughs> no pun intended. So for instance, right here i should probably make this brick medium blue instead of white uh because generally you know the interior colors don't matter but if you're gonna um certain situations they will so i'm gonna turn this one to medium blue because see up here black works fine gray works fine because uh you're not going to i'm sure you can see it more in digital design of the corners but in real life uh that's not going to matter as much but uh, except for like the bottom here, because like again, you can see that. And that's that's another like half a plate deal because if uh, a full plate was there, just show this quickly, you can only see half of it. So that's where sometimes uh, you just gotta be a little cautious. Uh, I'm a bit of a, a color freak when it comes to stuff. I'm really really picky um, what you can and can't see and what uh, flows. So um, I'm I like being very attentive to that. I don't like to be. It's just how I am. So, um, one quick thing I'm going to do, I can't remember actually what color I use here, so medium to gun, okay, sure, I'll be able to find that brick link, no problem. Um, but I probably don't have to, because I'm going to look up, there's a certain tile that I think could be useful in the situation, and that is this quarter round tile, and I just want to check, bright light yellow, dark orange, 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 <laughs> well, alright, um, so this does not come, um, I suppose I could attempt, if I just wanted to just mess around and go with dark orange. Um, I, boy, I'm really goofing with the color palette at this point. Because, no, that's, that's more of the, the pale color there. Okay, because I was thinking what I could do is, um, okay, now even in this situation it might not work the, um, the best because what I was thinking I could do is I could take a brick like this and if this is white and if I use that corner tile uh, it would give a bit more curve to the, the whole pattern there however like I was saying with the medium not medium the uh, half a tile half a plate I should say uh, it wouldn't be very flush there um, I suppose it wouldn't be such a big deal but what you can do is just something along these lines. And then if I just put this here, let's test this out and see what happens. So, um, that looks a little strange. I don't know if I'm too crazy about it. Uh, it does give that curvature though, but this, sometimes it's best just to go basic with brick heads. If you try adding too much detail, then they start to look really disconjointed and really strange. So um, I'll probably, again, um, I probably have to go and do a whole lot of messing around, but I think I'll just go with um, what I've got at the moment. Perhaps I can look at it um, maybe later on in the build, but uh, so yeah, uh, I'm just gonna, like I said before, check for the mini and blue, see if I can't change this somehow, or actually even just provide an alternate, so um, we'll find out what happens.
Hmm, if only these lift arms had a, a round hole in it. Uh, like if I, you could just, if I could take this and that, I could attach it onto the stud here, and uh, it would have a little bit of curve there, but that might be too long, so, hmm. So what I was thinking I could do is I could, if I built the wing in two parts, and if I just attach this up here, um, and then I could just like tile this off, and if uh, the wing is at the right angle, uh, they would mesh. However, uh, there doesn't seem to be enough room to actually do anything up here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this idea wasn't even going to work because I can't put the, the side of the head back on. So yeah, this uh, this idea totally didn't work because I can't put the side of the head back on. It's not meshing up correctly. Um, but you know, sometimes it's just good to try stuff. Maybe I'll give you ideas for something else. Well, I think I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, perhaps in the downtime, I'll get an idea for those winglets. Um, overall, yeah, I think she looks all right. I think she looks a little weird. It's, it's a combination of I think she looks good and I think she looks bad. So I don't know. I I, I guess that's good. Um, <laughs> oh well. We'll see what happens. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully I wasn't too boring and rambling on and stuff. But um, next time we'll actually go on to work and see if I can't get something to work with him. So that's it for all for now. So that's it for now. And until next time, goodbye.